history of proposals for a railway to serve the eastern suburbs of Sydney, spanning a century and going back as far as the 1870s, at last, the eastern suburbs railway is a reality. First, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Then the Opera House. And now, Sydney's Eastern Suburbs Railway. Each in its own way, a masterpiece of design and engineering. A symbol of modern Sydney rising to eminence among the great cities of the world. The Eastern Suburbs Railway was built at a cost of $168 million and is the first extension to our passenger rail network in New South Wales since 1956, when the Circular Key Link was opened. As our nation's most modern mass transportation system, the Eastern Suburbs Railway introduces new levels of passenger comfort and facilities. Not only are the new stations the most modern in Australia, but with their bright, spacious surroundings and striking colour schemes, they are most attractive. The Eastern Suburbs Railway actually provides the rail component of a sophisticated bus rail interchange system. Gleaming stainless steel double-deck trains are expected to carry 43,000 commuters a day on the 7-kilometer ESR journey between Central and Bondi Junction with intermediate stations at Town Hall, Martin Place, Kings Cross and Edgecliffe. Modern bus rail interchange facilities at Edgecliffe and Bondi Junction enable commuters to move quickly and comfortably between the feeder buses and the fast trains linking the eastern suburbs with the city. Trains run on a five minute frequency during and between peak periods with services at 10 to 15 minute intervals at other times. Journey time for trains between Bondi Junction and Central is only 11 minutes eight minutes between Edgecliff and Central, with trains taking seven minutes for the Bondi Junction to Martin Place journey. Each station has its own distinctive colour scheme for immediate recognition, a combination of blue, yellow and beige at Redfern. Predominantly green for Central, yellow for Town Hall, the three-level complex at Martin Place ablaze in ruby red, King's Cross with its attractive orange, the dark blue of Edgecliff, and finally Bondi Junction with its colourful light grey and orange tonings. And if the distinctive colour schemes are not enough to identify stopping places, Three-level station names in contrasting graduated colours are displayed prominently at all platforms. These can be seen easily by commuters, whether travelling on the top or bottom decks, or in the end compartments. Lighting at all stations, particularly platform edge illumination, is of the highest standard. Extensive safeguards have also been taken to ensure continued power supply in the event of interruption to electricity. Even if a major failure occurs, an emergency battery system has sufficient power for five hours lighting at every station. Black studded rubber tiling is used extensively on platform surfaces because of its long wearing and non-slip qualities and its undoubted value in reducing pedestrian noise levels. The $3 million automatic ticketing system is Australia's first and uses the latest overseas electronic technology. There's no waiting or delay with our sophisticated system which uses magnetically encoded tickets. These tickets are purchased from either coin-operated ticket vending machines or booking offices at Eastern Suburbs railway stations. Covering bus rail, rail bus or rail only journeys, the new system enables travellers to use automatic turnstile barriers at stations by inserting tickets bearing an encoded strip. The ticket is either swallowed by the machine if only valid for a particular journey or returned to the passenger if the ticket is still available for further use. Another innovation is closed circuit television. 
This helps staff in monitoring platforms, barriers, gallery and concourse levels so that they can act promptly to correct any irregularities. No effort has been spared in assisting passengers to find their way around our train network. Modern signs. Large diagrammatic maps and a courteous and friendly staff all combine to help the regular commuter and visitor alike. 39 escalators, installed at a cost of over $8 million, enable passengers to move freely between the various station levels. The escalators at Martin Place, linking the concourse and platform levels, are the longest in Australia, carrying passengers the equivalent of a five-storey building. Construction of Sydney's Eastern Suburbs Railway, a world-class integrated intermodal mass transportation system, was a triumph for the skilled Public Transport Commission staff and those of consultants and outside contractors who assisted. Nearly every trade and profession was represented in some way on this massive project. No effort was spared once the green light was given in 1967 for the line to be built to Bondi Junction. But it was no easy task to undertake one of the biggest engineering projects ever attempted in New South Wales. Excavating and removing one and a half million tons of sandstone and spoil from the lower bustling city and making sure there was no interference to towering city buildings whose foundations in some cases even straddled the tracks. Pouring several hundred thousand cubic meters of concrete to form the tunnel walls, floors and ceilings building graceful, sweeping viaducts. Placing thousands of sleepers in their firm concrete bed. Then laying the ribbons of steel and finally welding the rails into continuous lengths to provide a smooth ride. Erecting overhead masts and electric wiring. Installation of space age signaling and communications equipment building the colourful, attractive platforms and the myriad of other tasks which finally culminated in the reality of the Eastern Suburbs Railway. Let's just glance back and take a quick look at how the railway was built. This diagram shows where the ESR line connects at Erskineville with the Sydney Suburban Network. With trains on the new line in the initial stages operating between Central and Bondi Junction, the Erskineville Central section is only used to enable trains to return to depots for servicing. This section of the line also provides the essential link for through running of trains between Bondi Junction and the Illawarra line, starting about six months after the opening of the line. The route distance from Erskineville to Bondi Junction is 10 kilometres, most of which is in underground twin tunnels, apart from the viaducts at Woolloomooloo and Rushcutters Bay and a short section at Wallara. This profile diagram indicates the depths and grades on the new line. The steep grades encountered were dictated by the undulating terrain and the necessity to avoid tunnelling in poor ground conditions. The ESR has grades of 1 in 32 on both sides of Town Hall Station, about the same as the steepest grade in the suburban network, which is between Wynyard and the Harbour Bridge. Diesel electric locomotives, specially modified to eliminate harmful fumes, were used to haul work trains in the tunnels. For the smaller jobs, railroad Land Rovers, powered by LP gas, were in constant use, conveying men and materials to various work sites. Overhead wiring of 1500 volts DC was progressively installed using a specially equipped train proceeding on the newly laid tracks. All underground track consists of continuously welded rails laid on timber sleepers embedded in concrete and fastened to the sleepers with clip fastenings. The combination of welded track and high frequency tuned track signaling circuits which allowed the elimination of all joints results in a quieter, smoother ride for passengers. Smooth riding was also assisted by an old Bondi tram, which was used to grind the rails, removing all rolling imperfections. 
The new Redfern station is 15 metres below street level and the foundations and steelwork have been designed to accommodate a future 12-storey building. From Redfern, twin-driven arch tunnels like these at Wallara were built to Bondi Junction. These tunnels are five and a half metres high by four and a half metres wide and up to 25 metres underground. After travelling one kilometre from Redfern, there is a special crossover tunnel and turnback siding just south of Central to handle terminating trains during initial train operations. Just beyond the crossover, tracks enter the lower level at the new Central Station, which is 26 metres underground. The main concourse extends the full length of platforms, 180 metres, with extensions into north and south concourses. Entry to the lower platforms is by stairs and escalators. There is easy access at both ends also to the adjoining platforms, serving other destinations. The concourse area is directly below Chalmers Street, shown here in the early construction stages. What a difference now that the street has been restored and reopened for one-way traffic. The Public Transport Commission cooperated with the Sydney City Council in providing these functional bus and taxi awnings with their backdrop of the attractively landscaped pedestrian boulevard. Twin one-kilometre tunnels dip steeply with one in 32 grades up to 13 metres below sea level under the existing City Circle and Haymarket Depression to Town Hall Station which is located adjacent to the existing low-level platform. Escalators and stairs lead to the existing concourse. One kilometre long tunnels connecting Town Hall with Martin Place involved several difficult structures, such as underpinning building foundations. Under the Hilton Hotel, new piers actually straddle the tracks. The line passes directly beneath the Theatre Royal which involved provision of a special acoustic roadbed over a distance of 160 metres to eliminate vibration and noise for theatre patrons. Discreetly placed rubber cushion pads support the second stage concrete roadbed. Martin Place Station is located 20 metres below Martin Plaza, which rests on the roof of the station between Philip and Macquarie Streets. The platform level includes moulded plywood ceilings, terrazzo column facings, terrazzo wall panels and rubber flooring. The concourse area also features terrazzo wall panels and balustrades and concrete columns and ceilings. From the gallery level, escalators lead down to the concourse and stair entrances are provided in the colonnades of the adjoining Reserve Bank and Bank of New South Wales. Granite facings and ceiling finishes were provided to match the adjoining buildings. An additional entrance at concourse level assists passengers entering and leaving Martin Place station. Ventilation for Martin Place station is provided by air ducts tunnelled 25 metres below Sydney Hospital, terminating in inlet-outlet structures in the domain. Twin tunnels between Martin Place and the Domain Portal behind the Art Gallery include a track crossover to permit termination of selected trains from the Illawarra Line. The first above-ground structure on the ESR after leaving Central is the viaduct across the Woolloomooloo Valley. After crossing this viaduct, the tracks plunge underground to pass 22 metres below King's Cross. Twin escalators provide access to the concourse, which is located directly below Victoria Street, now restored for road traffic. Entrances to the station are by an arcade and escalators from Darlinghurst Road, or by stairs on both sides of Victoria Street. Rushcutters Bay Viaduct is of similar construction to the Woolloomooloo Viaduct and links King's Cross Tunnel with Edgecliff. A feature of the viaduct construction is a pre-stressed portal frame spanning the busy Eastern Expressway. Approaching Edgecliff, the line curves past the maintenance depot, which has facilities for servicing the line. Edgecliff station has been designed as a bus rail interchange, the bus interchange deck being on the roof of the Edgecliff Centre. 
Bus access to the deck is through a bus tunnel from New Southhead Road, passing under Edgecliff Road and Ocean Street. Separate ramps give bus access from Ocean Street also. Twin tunnels run for two kilometres from Edgecliff to Bondi Junction and are up to 25 metres below ground surface, except for the Wallara site where the line appears on the surface for about 200 metres. Originally, a station was planned for Wallara, but this was eliminated in 1976, following the government's review of the project. Tunnelling work in this section was speeded up by using a tunnel boring machine, appropriately named the Mole, which had a five-metre diameter circular cutting head for grinding out huge quantities of sandstone. The area at Wallara has been landscaped and acoustic barrier walls installed on both sides of the tracks up to platform height to reduce the noise level for nearby residents. Bondi Junction is the end of the line. This attractive and colourful station consists of a concourse connected by escalators to platform level and then by escalators and stairs to the bus deck at street level. Provision has been made in the structural design of Bondi Junction for a future airspace development over the bus interchange with access arcades to Oxford Street. Nearby is the elevated bypass road, constructed by the Department of Main Roads as part of the general development of the Bondi Junction area. The area beneath the viaduct has been leased from the Department of Main Roads and developed by the Commission as a car park for free use by commuters. The Eastern Suburbs Railway is truly an engineering masterpiece, built to the best standards in the world and bringing untold benefits. It has introduced a new concept in commuter travel, resulting in a rapid transit rail service able to move large numbers of passengers into and out of the city in the quickest possible time. A reduction in road traffic on the arteries leading into and within the city proper, as many buses terminate at the two bus rail interchange stations. A further reduction in road traffic as motorists recognise the speed and convenience of rail and switch to trains. Conservation of fuel resources so vital to our nation's future as a result of motorists leaving their cars at home and swinging to pollution-free, energy-saving rail travel. With pollution of our Sydney atmosphere of such concern, rail travel makes more sense. Major relief to the congested city circle rail system with the integration of eastern suburbs and Illawarra line services. At a time when many overseas railways are phasing out their passenger operations, the huge capital investment in the eastern suburbs railway highlights the determination of the New South Wales government and the Public Transport Commission to improve the state's public transport services. New trains, New buses, new ferries, new space age signalling and new workshops, and the new Eastern Suburbs Railway, all dramatically confirm public transport is getting better in New South Wales.